I know what my future in your life holds. What's that? I mean, I get to be a Mo, which um, is short for maid of honor. We've already agreed to be each other's maid of honor. Um, I'm probably gonna be the godmother of your children. I'm gonna like, be like the crazy aunt. I'm gonna, I don't know. Like, I can't be, wait. It's, it's gonna, gonna, gonna be, be awesome. Great. It's gonna be great. We're gonna be all old and weird. <laughs> We're gonna be those weird old ladies like twerking somewhere. <laughs> Having my best friend at the Olympics, us sharing that together was something that I'll never forget. I mean, we did everything together. We were roommates. We got fitted for our gear together. We walked in the opening ceremonies together. We were both like right next to the torch as it was lit and we like felt the heat from the flame on our faces. You can't make that stuff up. Like we were just in this sense of awe and excitement to be at our first Olympics. And if someone had told us when we were going there and doing all the processing that we were both gonna be leaving with Olympic medals when it was all over, we, I, I mean, of course that's what we wanted, what's we trained for, but you could only hope and dream. You know, when she won her bronze medal, she came back in the back after, and there's a picture of us hugging, and it was probably the best hug of my life, like getting to hug her then. Like, I was so proud of her and everything she'd worked towards, and I mean, it's just, it was, I don't know. You can't script stuff like that. You can't make stuff like that up, you know? Like, we have had some amazing moments together in our lives, and there's no one I'd rather share it with. Gold medalist and Olympic champion, representing the United States of America, Kayla Harrison. After London, I really considered retirement. You know, I achieved my goal. I became an Olympic champion. I was world champion. So I had done everything that I felt like I wanted to do. I wasn't sure if I had anything left in the tank, but knowing that Marty was going to be there and she was going to be doing this journey too, really helped me decide that, okay, you know, why not spend the next four years of my life beating people up for a living, traveling the world with my best friend. She achieved her Olympic champion goal and she was like, okay, this is hard. I really don't know if I want to go through this again. And I looked at her and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, and she's like, well, I'm getting, she used the excuse, like I'm getting a little older. And I'm like, I'm four years older than you. So if you're saying you're too old to do this, then you're saying I'm too old to do this. I was like, you just had the best result of your whole life. And I, I tried to put pressure on her. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I was like, you can do this again. Like, why would you stop when you're at the, the top epitome of your career? I know for sure that after London, I definitely wouldn't have continued if I didn't have someone who was there with me along the way who knew exactly what I was going through and I could talk to in a very real way. I love the way Marty makes other people feel. I love the way Marty makes me feel when I'm around her. She brings people up, she lifts them up. And that's something that not everyone can do. And she's really, really good at it. We started out, I guess, as competitors before we were friends. We used to fight when I was younger. The first time I met Kayla was when I fought her at the senior nationals when I think she was 15, so I had to be 19 or 20 years old. My first senior nationals, I think, and it was in San Diego. She was just a small little thing, just a wisp of a girl with this big, huge, curly hair. She armbarred me. <laughs> and I remember thinking, like, oh. I was really upset. I mean, we went on trips together our whole lives and we really started hanging out. I think at 09 Worlds, we started hanging out a little bit and we were like, oh, this girl's cool. And I was like, oh, this girl's pretty cool. Not long after that, um, we started rooming together at different tournaments and we, really, we clicked right away. We knew that we were simpatico. Rolling. Oh. Whenever you're ready. Shut. You know? Little... We're gonna be late for practice. Please leave. Where, I'm gonna get my judo bag so I can pack it. Oh my, uh. Every day, that's my every day. Inside the dojo, Marty's like a little spark plug. She's just this little like. <laughs> Inside the dojo, Kayla is like a tornado. She's just trying to barrel through and demolish whoever you put in front of her. For me, it's inspiring to watch because like when I'm feeling down or when I'm feeling like, oh God, I can't do this, like I look over at Marty and she's like ready to kill someone. I'm like, okay, yes, I can. For her, you know, 
If you haven't pushed yourself to the level where you feel like you're gonna break physically and emotionally, then you probably didn't have a good day. You didn't push yourself hard enough. We talk all the time about fighting, and when when we're at, at tournaments, you know, she's back in the back saying, "Hey, that was a good, that was a good match," or maybe you should do this, or maybe you should think about that. But you look good. You look really good. Like she always says that. You look really good, and I'm like. No, I don't. And she's like, no, you look really good. I watch her fight and I see how her judo is and I ask her how to do the things that I know she knows how to do well. I say, why do you do that and why does it work? And then because I know she's awesome at it, I know that I'm getting the right advice from the right person and it helps me improve my judo and expand it. Do the robot, do your robot. And action. Yeah. Outside the dojo, Kayla is fun, silly, um, easy going. She's one person that I always say wears her heart on her sleeve. You always know how she's feeling, good or bad, and she's not afraid to show it, which I really like about her. Outside of the dojo, Marty is you're fun and you're easy going and you're chill and you're great and we have so much fun but at the same time you can be super serious and you can be like a little bit of a warrior and you can like keep things in perspective. Oh. <laughs> we can never not be best friends because if we weren't best friends I would have to kill her. Because she knows so much. Since you think you know everything about me, let's have a little quiz. What was my favorite cartoon growing up? Um, gargoyles. Correct. <laughs> what are the names of my cats? Jack and Jim. Marty, who did I beat in London? Ooh, um, Russia first round. Yep. Um, Hungary second round. Yep. Uh, Brazil third round. Yep. Armbar in the last like ten seconds. Yep. 14. Uh, 14 seconds? Sorry. <laughs> uh, in the final, she beat the British girl by uh, two Yukos. Correct. In London. What's my favorite drink? Triple H. That's my favorite drink. <laughs> it's our favorite drink. It's our favorite drink. Um, a Triple H is three shots of espresso on ice with a pump of hazelnut and sometimes a little bit of milk. Delicious. Splash. Marty, who is my first boyfriend? I know it was kindergarten. He <laughs> uh, kissed me on the playground. Tyler? Trent? Something with a T. Mm -hmm. um, Tim. T Tom. TJ. Yeah. TJ. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm five years old, I got that. What's up, Teach? Missed out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> You know, one of my coaches always told me when you do judo, you are gonna be really lonely. You're gonna, especially when you become a top player, you're gonna be lonely and you're gonna be tired and you're gonna feel like you're all by yourself and there's no one who understands what you're going through. And I always think that he didn't know that I was gonna meet Kayla. Some philosopher said as a friend is a single soul dwelling in two bodies and that's what we are. We are literally the same person just in two different bodies.